Which version of Ableton 12 should you buy? I hate YouTubers that ramble on, so I'm gonna give you a short answer and then a long answer. Short answer, get the standard version, which is the middle of the three. So now let's get into the long answer as to exactly why. So I'm on Ableton site right now, as you can see, and we have three different versions of Ableton 12. This is true for a lot of other versions of Ableton from 11, 10, the list goes on. You have intro, standard, and suite. Now, like I said before, standard is the main way to go, and I'll explain why, but this is the middle one. In the sense that these are all Ableton 12, but as you can imagine, the higher up you go, or to be more specific, the more money you spend, more features, packs, instruments, and a lot more. Here's the unfortunate thing. I'm gonna be honest. Ableton 12 standard is $439. That is a good amount of money, depending on your financial situation. Couple things I will say though. One, if you did purchase Ableton 11, and I love that they do this, and you go to upgrade, it's cheaper. Now, let's say if you've never bought Ableton ever, you do have to spend $439 out of pocket. But let's say you bought Ableton 11 intro, standard, or suite, you can be able to be upgraded to Ableton 12 for way less money, depending on which version you bought of Ableton 11. Another thing you can see right down here in some fine print is you can also spend $36.62 for 12 months. They do have a payment plan, and the good thing about this is if you do the math out, you're not spending any extra money. They don't charge you interest or, or more money or anything like that. So the good thing is, if let's say you're very tight on money, but you want to get Ableton 12, you could spend $36.62, like surround that to $37, $37 a month for a year, and you're not charged any extra, and now you have Ableton 12 standard. Being honest, the intro, even though it's only $99, which seems very appealing at first, is very limited. Sweet, I think there is some advantages to it, but for that 300, or actually a bit more than $300 price jump, I think for most producers, most people watching this video, standard, you can be absolutely fine with. Here's the main reason why. Now, first off, these are the features for each one. You can see a lot of these are very similar. If you do a quick scan from like group tracks, VSTs, right? A lot of these are very similar. Here's the main reason why I'm saying standard and especially standard over, over intro, I think of anything, and then we'll get to suite, is right here. 16 audio and MIDI tracks. This is for intro, keep in mind, all the way on the left, and 16 scenes, and two send and return tracks. Being honest, that is very limited. I can't even imagine trying to produce with that in the sense that I feel like I'd have to almost like, I don't know, maybe get creative. I mean, there's maybe some Ableton tricks you could probably use to get around this, but that's so limited that when trying to produce music, it's really gonna hold you back. And if anything, the best word I can use is, it's gonna be very frustrating, right? And I know $99 seems very appealing because it's way cheaper. Of course, it's the cheapest option. And it is a pretty pretty big jump if you look at it from $100 to $439, right? Pretty big jump, what is that? About $300 ish dollars a little more than 300 but having unlimited audio and midi tracks unlimited scenes 12 send and return tracks standard is really the way to go now looking at standard versus suite you may be wondering like okay mark i get it like standard is the way to go even though it's a lot more expensive than intro but why not suite you know now i will say this if you have the money you might as well get suite personally for me i have suite just because i'm like why not type thing i also use ableton all the time i'm a full-time producer full-time youtuber so this is my job in a sense, so I do have suite, but you may be wondering like, okay, why are you saying standard though over suite for most people? And if I go down here, and I'm gonna just quickly scan this, again, I don't like making videos longer than they have to be. These are all the same, you can see. The biggest thing is this, and that is Max for Live. I'm gonna be honest, I rarely use Max for Live. I think if you're doing a lot of live performances with Ableton and you're doing a lot of complex routing and stuff like that. I feel like that makes sense for you to get the suite just to use Max for live. But that's to me one of the biggest differences, or if I, I might even say the biggest difference between standard and suite is Max for live. Now, yes, you do get more, I think it says somewhere here, 71 plus gigs of sounds, right? 38 plus gigs of sounds. I'm gonna be honest, I kind of forgot that Ableton has a bunch of sound packs that are included with this. I never downloaded them. So I'm gonna have to go back and do that. Because for me, in case you're curious, I use Ableton along with Splice Sounds. That's where I get all my samples from. 
So the idea of having like, what is that about 31 or no, no, I can't do math right now. 33, excuse me, 33, uh, 33 more gigs of sounds is kind of indifferent to me personally, just because I'm like, oh, well, I'm getting all my, my sounds from Splice anyway. The extra sounds that are included in the suite don't really care. But the biggest thing, you can see more instruments and effects, all instruments and effects. So there's some more instruments, some more effects with Suite. I will say that. I think the biggest difference really is the max for live. And I think if you're not really focusing on a lot of live performances and that kind of thing, I think if you're, I hate to use this phrase, producing like most people do, which is just with Ableton in your studio, however you do it, whether you're fully in the box or like say maybe you have other extra equipment. I feel like for most people, that's why I suggest standard is really the way to go. I, I feel like standard is just the simplest option when it comes to Ableton that gives you everything you need without limiting you the way intro does for that hundred dollars because as i go down here you can see even if i look at just like the the spacing of these there's obviously a big difference between intro and standard like i said especially when it comes to the tracks up here going down here we have other things too audio to midi is really helpful audio slicing you know these kind of different little things and then here the biggest thing you'd see really if you just kind of like just match them up in almost a visual sense it's really max for live few more instruments and a few more sounds and that kind of thing. But overall, really what it comes down to, I think for most people, 90% of producers watching this, unless you're doing something very specific with Ableton or like say you're doing live performances, standard all the way. And like I said earlier, if like say money is very tight, you can do that payment plan. And that's a big thing I suggest to a lot of musicians because you do want to purchase the software that you use. You do want to buy the software that you use to make music and produce music. And when it comes to Ableton, the good thing about their payment plan, like I said, and like I stressed a couple times already, is there's no interest. They're not charging you any extra money if you do all the math out. So spending $37 a month is 100% the way to go to get Ableton 12 standard.